here's an interesting conversation I've been, I've been meaning to have with you for a while, mate. Have you ever heard about the return of Omega theory that never happened? No. <laughs> and now, just for context, if you're wondering, I've written this down because there was so much. I didn't want to miss anything out. So I apologise if it comes across as very, you know, very flat or whatever. But I think it'd be best to tell you the full story in scope. Um, well, so, so just remind me very quickly, the, the Omega is he, it was a Time Lord and was very bad. Was worse than the master he was the time lord that helped create um the means of time travel the original means i i get oh, okay. I, I am disregarding anything the time's child related <laughs> you know bloody tech tayon no omega is the one that discovered time travel but um yeah he's the time lord okay. that discovered time travel and helped found gallifrey along with rassilon and the other a mysterious time lord but yeah this is the story arc that could have been but never was real and it's to do with the character of Omega from the classic series of Doctor Who. And this is a theory that sparked around the Matt Smith era. So here's the basic, here's the basic outline of this fan theory. The story goes that Moffat intended to have the Mad Time Lord Omega return during his run on Doctor Who. This rumour first breathed life into the fandom when Series 5 was pr approaching its conclusion. One of the rumours at the time was that the, was that the Series 5 final would take place on Gallifrey and be set prominently in the Death Zone. Now, after this was proven false, of course, you would assume this rumour would you know, die out. However, the theory sort of lived on into the next season because of another aspect of Series 5, which was the Church of the Papal Mainframe. They were an organisation that were heavily featured in the Weeping Angel two-parter, who's, if you, pay to, if you pay attention to their uniform, the symbol on their shoulders, I believe, they look suspiciously like the symbol Omega in general. And of course, this led to fans theorising that this could be connected to the character of Omega. The church organisation would later confirm to be returning in the Series 6 season, so Adon Moffat's at the time intent to tell a big spanning story arc with the Doctor connected with the church at this point, people assumed, people assumed that this connection could be Time Lord related and thus possibly be related to Omega. But of course, once again, Series 6 came and went and the theory sort of died down. You could say there was a bit of a murmur around Season 7, possibly including him. This was likely fueled with the confirmation that the second half of the season would be airing in 2013, which of course was the celebration year of Doctor Who's 50th anniversary. However, indeed, Series 7, the 50th, and even 11th's final episode came and went, and Omega was never seen, or much less even teased, outside of a brief name drop in the, fifth, the day of the Doctor. Now, at this point, you'd think the theory would officially die. But at this point, the theory actually evolved. Add on the anticipation of the next era of Who being the search for Gallifrey, come season A, a new character would then be introduced to us on screen, Missy, who would of course later be revealed to be a new incarnation of the Doctor's old ne nemesis, the Master. During the 2014 series final, much of Missy's backstory was left unexplored. This led to much intrigue from fans trying to guess how the Master had somehow returned, after seemingly being killed off by Rassilon, or with Rassilon, and his council during the end of time. And of course, one theory that fans latched onto was the idea of Omega. This new variation of the theory goes as such, that during the final days of the Time War, the Time Lords brought back Omega into the fold of the war, of the conflict, releasing him from his antimatter prison to aid them in the, in the fight against the Daleks. After the Doctor saved Gallifrey in the Day of the Doctor, however, Omega then took over the planet, his revenge, basically. And there's other versions of this theory that stated at the time that Gallifrey itself could have been put into the Antimatter universe, where, which, which was Omega's domain. So that was one other theory, version of the theory. After taking over the planet, Omega would then, likely convinced, likely convinced by the Master, would then make him his agent allowing the Mad Time Lord to regain a new set of regenerations and then gift him with a new TARDIS, now being ordered to access his eyes and ears throughout the galaxy, keeping tabs on the Doctor and eventually kill him if the opportunity ever arose. 
That's the gist of the theory, at least at the time it was. And this theory would explain why Missy gifted the Doctor an army of Cybermen in the Series 8 final, so the Doctor could use them as an efficient weapon against the Wrath of Omega. This theory would live on throughout the fandom, and of course continue into the next season, driven by the added mystery of Rat surrounding Missy, and the possible return of Gallifrey. However, by no one's surprise at this point, Series 9 came and went, and thus, at this point, the fan theory officially died. <laughs> because at its conclusion, Series 9 closed with the return of Gallifrey being completely sidelined for the Doctor's companion, Clara Oswald. <laughs> Missy would continue to feature prominently in the show's 10th season, which of course also revealed her eventual regeneration and backstory and how she became this incarnation after doing a team-up episode with the Master. <laughs> so this theory, I guess you can summarise already, it never was an official groundwork theory. There never was anything concrete to say this was true. But it's interesting to say that this could have been one of Doctor Who's most grandest storylines, if this was the case. So what do you think? Um, well, from your description of the theories, it's, it sounds very much like people just class, um, clutching at straws like throughout the series. Just like, oh, this was a theory before. And it's, there's, it's still a theory now. Oh, look, look at this. This might be that. It, it does seem very um, straw clutchy. It sounds like a really, really cool villain, like an aspect or villain to have in the show and like they could have like you get like given ideas of like seeding the character through like the church and the, the army that sounds like a really cool way of doing it in the future of like of having this really prominent villain be the main like antagonist and like seeding it through the whole series it, it honestly reminds me a bit of loki and of the of the show loki and how the end villain was um essentially kang yeah. Um, and how, because, because Kang is the, the Time Lord, of the Time Lord, the time travel villain in Marvel, and he's going to have, like, I think the Marvel now is going to be, like, lots of time travel based multiverse stuff. That does sound like a, a cool thing, but I, lo I love that the theory, back to, back to your point about the theory, I love that the theory is just, this could be Omega. Oh, yeah, it's not. Okay, next series. Oh, it could be Omega this time. Oh, no, it's, oh, but maybe it could. <laughs> I think I don't think it is. It's going to be until they specifically say it is. So I, t I think the theory is very like uh, wishful thinking at this point. Yeah, it, it sounds really interesting, like the way that people have been like of, of, of seeding it in little aspects throughout the series has been like it, has, it is really interesting, and I love how it just keeps changing and evolving. The same theory, just to like uh, I guess it's a fan fan service type thing. It, it is really interesting. What's your like um, thoughts about it? Honestly, I like the theory just in concept because I think it's such a, as you said, it's such a grand idea concept that could definitely have a lot of story potential for you know the grand world of Who, considering the backstory of Omega. And if it was true, I think it would have been one of the most ambitious things, even beyond what Moffat did end up doing with his era of Doctor Who, when he like he made the cracking time and then that spun off into the church and the silence and that went that lasted all the way through up to Matt Smith's run of Doctor Who. But I think it would have been something else completely if it was all connected to a classic villain that had such a historical importance to the law of Doctor Who and the Doctor in general. And if it had continued past the Matt Smith era into the Capaldi era, that I think it definitely would have opened a lot of interesting conversations for the fandom if that was the case and it would definitely would have brought in tons of intrigue for classic characters and villains to be brought back into the fold again because the theory is more about setting up a big return for a let's be honest very minor villain in i mean he's only in two stories if i remember rightly but i think this, the concept would have been very amazing honestly and i loved it i love the theory but it is a shame, and you are right. It it never was. There never was any official ground for it, and it was more just like fans at the time thinking, "Oh, this this possibly could, could be connected. It could be exciting and interesting, and it's it's an excuse to bring back a character that some people will be big fans of, some people will be not fans of, but they can see the story story potential with this character. And who knows? You could be right. Maybe somehow Omega is related to a future arc that has yet to be revealed. 
I doubt it because I again I don't think the show the current showrunners are the best position in the best position right now, much less to do anything that could risk possibly hurting the legacy of Doctor Who. But I think that if again in with the right hands, we could definitely have a very gripping storyline that could one day feature Omega in a very prominent role. And whether that is if he's brought back in a very subtle way, teased for a few name drops or certain indirect mentions like an organization working for him. I think there's definitely something that you could do with that. And I hope I hope so. I, I think I think so that reminded me when you were saying that, it kind of reminded me of how Missy was introduced. Like it, I think it'd be such a cool uh, way of introducing a main villain if it's been uh, teased throughout multiple Doctors. Like so, how you know how Missy was kind of set up in Matt Smith's era with like the lady in the shop who got Doctor and Clara together, and then you know it went on to Pete Capaldi's era. It was the, the same lady, and it ended up being Missy. I think that's a really cool idea of setting up. Uh, a, a, a villain throughout multiple doctors, but also about the uh, organisation, like you said, that reminds me as well as uh, of the great intelligence in ser- in the second half of series seven, where they were set up in lots of different episodes, being lots of random things, and it ended up being the great intelligence. However, that was terrible, and it didn't really work out, and was kind of underwhelming and a, and a waste of Richard E. Grant. Um, but I think if they did that for like a future run where they set up multiple different like Thanos like how Thanos um, happened and like how maybe the the, the the death of say the 14th Doctor was from this character on the lines of Loki like how, how Loki was hired by Thanos to, to get a stone how the main villain of of the series that kills off the um, the 14th Doctor then has the 15th Doctor it, like finding all these these things of um of all the different aspects of this new villain and then this new villain being the main villain of the next run like but like the biggest villain Doctor Who has had and like it's so big and the scope is so big that it actually killed off a, a Doctor already I think it's a really cool possible future idea for how the series could go yeah um, which I'm actually going to write that down because that seems quite an interesting uh, like story detail um, I think that would be like a, a, a character spanning a really long, like a villain spanning a long time, sounds like a really cool threat and a, and a definitely like a, a bigger stakes, a bigger, um, bigger, just a, just a, a more in, uh, dangerous and intimidating threat. Sounds mm. cool. Indeed, we can only hope for the future of yeah. what what this kind of potential storyline could be. You never know. 